All right, so uh, well, we're going to start off our course uh, advanced functions with a function. And uh, the function that we're going to look at uh, today, I guess, is the absolute value function. Now, there's a few ways to look at this function. And so I'm going to kind of describe a, a few different ways that I look at it. Uh, some of the ways are applicable when you're graphing and uh, other ways are, you know, better off uh, understanding when you're just kind of uh, looking at calculating. So we'll start off with, uh, first of all, the absolute fun value function. Uh, function notation here, this is said f of x is equal to, now these little bars here are the absolute value bars. So f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Now, again, different ways to look at this thing is that on a number line, this function describes the distance or magnitude of the number x from the origin. So how far away you are from zero, which is our origin. All right, now I'll get to the graphing part too, which is f of x, the absolute value of x, is what we call a piecewise function. Now we're gonna graph some absolute value and I'm gonna explain this a little bit more. Uh, but a piecewise function just means your function is in pieces. It doesn't stay the same. And so when we have uh, the absolute value of x, uh, when x is less than zero, we put a negative sign in front of x. Uh, and when x is greater than zero, then we uh, are just x, uh, we just have our x. Essentially what your absolute value of x does is if something is negative, it turns it to a positive. And if it's positive, it keeps it as positive. And so here's the graph of the absolute value of x. And so uh, part of it here is that if I put in an x value of one, well then the y value is just one. But if I put in an x value of negative one, then the y value turns, to posit turns it to positive and you get a y value of one. All right, so that's one way to look at it. And again, when we start graphing this function here in a little bit, I'll refer to that and we'll, we'll, again, I'll explain how that's going to work. Now, in terms of our first way of looking at it, where it's, it describes the magnitude, and for those of you who've been in my physics class, that is the size of the number from the origin. So down here, I have a number line. So we're gonna figure out here the absolute value of three, the absolute value of negative two, and the absolute value of negative three. So first of all, I got a number line here. There's my zero, it's in the middle. I'm just checking the chat here. I thought I heard a little ding, but maybe that's just because somebody's in. Yeah, that's just somebody's in. All right. All right. So on our number line, again, to the right, we generally put, well, we do put our positive numbers, just like in a graph. All right. And on the left of zero, we put our negative numbers. So there's negative one. Then it goes in order here. Negative two and negative three. There we go. All right. And so when we look at the absolute value of three, so there's our number three on our number line. And on a number line, this function describes the distance from zero. Well, what's the distance from zero? It's just three, nothing crazy there. All right, now, the absolute value of negative two. So I put negative two on my number line here. There it is. And how far away is it from zero? Well, one, two spots. So the absolute value of negative two is two, right? Uh, same thing with negative three here. When we look at it, there's negative three on my number line. What is the distance from zero? Well, one, two, three. So that's one way to look at it. And again, the other way to look at it, especially when we get graphing here is take whatever's inside the absolute value and make it positive. Now, one of the ways to do that, and this is something we're gonna get into, is just simply multiplying by negative one. All right, now we'll get into that in a little bit. All right, or you, again, you can look at it as whatever's in there just changes to positive. So for example, in this question, example two, find the absolute value of negative two minus four, then plus two afterwards, uh, divided by the absolute value of four. First of all, the absolute value uh, is a special type of brackets, just like actually the square root symbol is a special type of bracket. And so when you're doing Bedmus, uh, well, you have to do what's inside the brackets here first. So when I'm calculating negative two minus four, the absolute value of it, well, 
lose two, lose four, you're down six. So I have the absolute value of six plus two divided by the absolute value of four. All right. Now, again, when I look at the absolute value of negative six, how far is negative six from zero? Six spots. Again, or I can just change that number to a positive. The plus two is going to stay the plus two because, well, it wasn't even the absolute value sign. The absolute value of four. Well, what's uh, change? What's four? Change it to positive. Well, four is already positive, so I'm going to keep it as a four. All right. Or again, you could look at it as four is four spots away from zero. And then now we just have a simple uh, equation here where we have six plus two is eight divided by four. And of course, eight divided by four is two. All right. So again, that's just equations working with uh, the absolute value sign. Now, the absolute value notation. All right. Now, so uh, first of all, I'm going to express this on a number line where we have, and again, I'm not sure how much uh, I think I know in my math class, we did a little bit with less than or equal to signs and greater than or equal to signs when we talked about domain and range which again, we're going to do uh, on uh, our next class, which I believe is Monday. Yes, it is. All right, so here's my number line. All right, so uh, what, we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna express this notation on a number line, and then I'm gonna express it as an absolute value notation. Just kind of give you a visual representation of what we're looking at, and then uh, actually write it as an absolute value. All right, so again, here's my number line. I got zero in the middle. Let's see here, positives to the right here. So we got one, two, three, and of course, negative to the left where I have negative one, negative two, and negative three. All right, now, when I express the first, well, let's go, I'm gonna do this one here, uh, the second part. X is greater than or equal to two. Well, on a number line to express that, it's greater than and equal to. So I'm going to, because it's equal to, I have a solid dot. If it was just greater than two, then I would have an open dot. All right. And it's greater than two. So I'm going to put an arrow there. Now, the first part, which is X, X is less than or equal to negative two. All right. Is that uh, it's less than or equal to two. So again, equal to, I can put a closed dot. But because it's less than, it means it's more negative. So negative three is less than negative two. And so my arrow goes this way. Now, here's how I'm going to express this as an absolute value notation. And I'm going to show you why I did a visual representation here. Is that The answer to this is that the absolute value of x, which now is we're talking about the distance from zero, is always greater than or equal to two. Because, again, I'm going to write that down. The distance from zero uh, must be greater than two. All right? So that's what we're looking at in this situation. So that's how I express that information as an absolute value. All right, now I'm going to try my second one here. And again, if you have any questions, just let me know here. So I'm going to draw a little number line here just as an example. All right, and let's see here. We got uh, our, uh, our, our expression here is negative 5 is less than or equal to x, which again is x is less than or equal to 5. All right, so I'm going to draw my origin in here. There's my 0. I'm going to skip a few numbers. I got five to the right, and that, of course, means negative five to the left. Now, what does this mean here, this notation? Uh, it's two parts. All right, negative five is less than or equal to x. All right, so that means, or x, or you can read it backwards. That's the best part about less than or equal to. I can look at this as x is greater than or equal to negative five. So that means it's greater than or equal to negative five. So again, it's equal to, so I have a closed dot this way. Now the second part is X is less than or equal to five. So again, less than or equal, equal to, so I have a closed dot. 
and it's less to five. So this is the area we're talking about. All right, so again, here's how I'm going to express this in absolute value notation. And again, I'm gonna explain it. Is the absolute value of x, again, the distance from zero. The distance from zero here is less than and equal to five. So this area, this blue line, is means that the distance from the origin is less than five, which is true. All right, so that's how I would express that as absolute value notation. Now, I'm gonna go the opposite way here. I have absolute value, uh, uh, and I'm gonna express it on a number line. I'm gonna graph it. All right, and so again, uh, we got the absolute value of x is greater than four. All right, so I'm gonna draw a number line here. Uh, again, I put zero in the middle and four to the right and a negative four to the left. And again, if you've got any questions, speak up here. Again, this is all about the social part, unless you're ghosting me and you're just uh, logged on and left, <laughs> which I've seen. All right, so this absolute value of X is greater than four. That is saying that the distance from zero is always bigger than four. So on the positive side, that means, oh, greater than. So I'm gonna have an open dot here because it's just greater than. That means four is not included, but the distance is always greater than four from the origin. So there's one arrow, but there's two sides to this. There's the positive and the negative side. And so if I want my distance to be greater than four on the negative side, again, open dot here at negative four, and my arrow would go to the left. Because say negative five here, that distance is definitely greater than four from zero. All right, and again, if you plugged in a number here, for example, negative five, by the absolute value of negative five, just as an example, is it greater than four? Well, yeah, it is because again, the absolute value just changes things to positive. And so is five greater than four? Yeah, it is. So that every uh, number left of negative four satisfies this equation. Same with every number greater than four satisfies this equation or this expression, however you wanna look at it again. All right, now we get the next one here. B, the absolute value of X is less than or equal to five. All right, so again, I'm gonna draw that on a number line. So I'm gonna have five to the right and five, negative five over here to the left. All right, so this time it's saying the distance from zero is less than or equal to five, which over here, again, equal to, so I'm gonna have a closed dot. All right, and because it's less than, the arrow is gonna go this way, if you will. But the distance from zero in terms of negative five uh, is less than five, the distance from zero. So again, closed dot, so the left side of zero. So there again, in this green line, any number along this green line, including these dots, if I plug that number into the expression, would be true that it would be less than or equal to five, the absolute value of it. For instance, say again, I like to do the negatives. Try negative three, it's right in here somewhere. Uh, what would it be equal to? Again, just switch the number to a positive three, is three less than or equal to five? Well, yeah, of course it is. I'd rather have $5 than $3. All right. Uh, oh, so we got some examples here. Rewrite using absolute value notation. All right, so I'm gonna put some examples on here. So let's see here. Uh, I gotta draw my number line here. Let's go with a zero here, uh, a six in here. All right, and a negative six over here. And the example I'm gonna look up is I'm gonna say we've got, uh, I'm gonna do a closed dot all the way across here in a closed dot. All right, so when I'm writing this in absolute value notation, all right, so if I look in here that the distance from zero, either positive or negative, is always less than six. And so because it's positive or negative, I have the absolute value of x, and again, closed dots here, it's always inside these two numbers, negative six and six, so it's going to be less than or equal to six. 
So the distance from the origin is always less than six, whether you go right or left, when you, and again, in terms of absolute value notation. All right, let's try something a little bit different here. Uh, again, I'm going to draw a example. So let's see, put a zero in the middle here. This time I'll go uh, four to the right. And uh, let's go four to the left, which means negative four over here. All right, and let's see here. Uh, my example here is, let's go with a open dot. All right, I'll put an arrow out this way. Open dot here, out to the left. All right, so now, when I want to write this in terms of absolute value notation, again, when I'm looking at my number line here, to the right, the number we're looking, all the numbers on this purple part of this right arrow, all those numbers are greater than four. All right, the distance from the origin is always greater than four. When I look to the left part of my number, uh, my purple, my purple arrow, my left purple arrow, all those numbers are less than negative four. But in terms of absolute value notation, all those numbers are greater than four from zero, right? The distance of all these numbers in here, the distance from zero is always greater than four. And so in terms of absolute value notation, I'd say the absolute value of X is always greater than, and I'm not gonna put equals again because I have open dots, which means I'm not including the distance of four, and it would always be greater than four. So the distance from the, what this, again, this absolute value notation is saying is the distance from the origin is always greater than four. All right, so that again is working with notation. All right, and how to express and what it actually means. Now, again, the absolute value function up here, when we're graphing it, all right, is a piecewise function. All right, so we're going to get to that. Here we go. So another way of looking at this function is what I'm talking about. All right, so here we go. First example in terms of graphing. We want to graph f of x, which is equal to x minus 2, uh, the absolute value of it. All right, so again, it's a piecewise function. So there's pieces. So I'm going to draw it up as pieces. f of x is equal to, all right, and to draw a piecewise function, usually you have a big little squirrely bracket there. Now, here's the difference. Here's what you got to look for here is, like I said, you when you have a positive number inside your absolute value brackets, it's just positive. When you have a negative number inside the absolute value, it turns to positive. Now, here's the thing with the when you're graphing these functions is what you look at is inside the brackets is what number makes this neither positive or negative. And in this case, the answer is two, right? If I put a two in here for x, two minus two would be zero. So that's the spot where things change. All right, where the function is neither positive or negative. So here's what I'm going to write is I've got two situations now. Uh, for this function, that this function, when it's greater than or equal to two, it's going to be positive before the absolute value takes over. Well, it's going to be positive no matter what, even after the absolute value takes over. But when x is less than two, whoops, less than two, how do I get rid of that little spot? x is less than two, this piece would be negative. But yet again, the absolute value is going to turn it into a positive. All right, so here's how I would write this piecewise function. And listen, these things take a little bit to get used to, all right? Now, the first part is, is any number that I put in for x minus 2, for any value of x that's greater than or equal to 2, this thing's either neutral or it's positive. So the absolute value really doesn't have to do anything because it doesn't have to switch it to positive, it already is. So the function stays the same. All right, so that is, again, because any number greater than or equal to 2, this piece is either positive or neutral, I guess. If it's 2 right on, it's neutral, and after that, the value is positive. But when x is less than 2, here's the tricky part. This thing is negative, and the absolute value bars will flip it to positive. But it's not like a number. That's the confusing part, right? It's an expression. So how do you make any expression that's negative, and how do you turn it to a positive? you multiply it by negative one. So here's what I'm going to do here. I've got my x minus two, right? Whoops, x minus two. 
because when x is less than two this thing would be negative i gotta switch it to positive and again to do that to an expression i multiply by negative one well now i can simplify that and so negative one times x uh, just doing the rainbow rule here is what i call it or the distributive property which i don't bother teaching anymore because nobody remembers that i do negative one times x is negative one x and then i do negative one times negative two which is a positive two so that is what my absolute value uh, function looks like as a piecewise function now how do i graph this thing well in pieces this is a linear equation here x minus two which means i have a y intercept oh i gotta watch my x value here key part is at two here all right and so uh at x equals two i have uh, a y intercept of negative two so i'm going to put that in there a slope of one so this is a little uh, uh review of linear equations from way back in grade nine here and so i don't i'm not going to start graphing this thing until x is two whoops i should even get i should get i gotta get rid of that dot i don't know the points there all right so here we go so x is negative two that's my y-intercept, but again, that's not where the function starts. It starts at x equals 2, but I do do the slope. Uh, let's see here. So rise over 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. Oh, it actually is at that spot. Cool. All right. So there we go. Closed dot. Up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. And there we go. That's this part of the function. Now the other piece, after x is two less than two, this function is again a linear equation where we have negative one x plus two. The y-intercept is two, all right, uh, but the slope is negative one, which means uh, down one, right one. Down one, well actually it's, it is less than two here, so I can put that in. Uh, so down one, right one, down one, right one, right on this blue dot, but this function does not include two, x equals two, because there's no equal sign there. So essentially, that's what this red part's gonna look like. That's just a sketch. And again, the blue part is the top part. And so there's what our absolute value function looks like. All right, so let's try another one here. I wanna graph f of x is equal to the absolute value of x plus 2. Now, again, I need to know what that breaking point is, all right, where that function is 0, because it, again, is a piecewise function. Now, all I'm worried about is the absolute value part. And what part makes x equal to 0? What value? Well, it's when x actually is 0, all right? So we're going to have two pieces here. The first piece is when x is greater than or equal to 0, and the other piece here is when x is less than zero. All right. Now, when it's greater than zero, this part is just positive. And so I'm going to write it as x plus two. No need to change anything. I just drop the absolute value bars. Now, when is it negative? Well, when it's less than zero. And so how would I switch an uh, an x because that's what the absolute value does switches things from uh, negative to positive no matter what so this x when it's less than zero this thing is negative but how would i switch it well i would multiply it by negative one but here's the difference here i'm going to show you is i'm going to multiply x by negative one but that two is not in the absolute value bar so it is not getting multiplied by negative one like this guy up here because the negative two was in brackets or in the absolute value, this two is not. And so there's my piecewise function that I just multiplied the piece that's inside the absolute value bars by negative one. All right, well, now I'm gonna graph it. So I'll start off with the top part. Again, it's a linear equation here where we have a y-intercept of two and a slope of one. Now, uh, at x equals zero, the value is two. There we go. It's actually the y-intercept. And the slope is 1. So uh, up 1, right 1. Up 1, right 1. Up 1, right 1. So a sketch it in there. There's what it's going to look like. Now, when 
we do the bottom part. I put in x equals zero, but it's gonna be an open circle here. Uh, put in a zero here for x. Negative one times zero is zero and a two, plus two. So my value is gonna be a two. There we go, open circle there, because again, it's not an equal sign. And what's this saying? I have a y-intercept of two, but the slope is negative one, which is negative one over one, which means I go uh, up or down one, right one. But we're going left here. So another way to write the slope is I write one over negative one. Because with a fraction, you can put the negative sign on the top or the bottom. That's when you're dealing with slope or in the middle. Now, it doesn't often go in the bottom. It's kind of like, uh, it's, it's just, it's not wrong, but it's just not right either. It's kind of like when somebody says the Toronto Blue Jays won yesterday 3-5. You don't say that. You say they won 5-3. Is it wrong? No, but it, it's just not the way we say it. But in this term, in this way, slope helps us where now the rise is on the top, which means up one, but the, the run on the bottom says negative one, which means left one. So I can follow my slope this way, up one, left one, up one, left one. And again, there's the sketch of my absolute value function, graphing it. All right, let's try one more. This looks a little bit tougher. All right, we have f of x is equal to the absolute value of 3x minus 6. All right, so again, it's a piecewise function because it's an absolute value. It's in pieces. Now again, where's the breaking point? Which value of x makes the inside of the absolute value zero? Well, if I plugged in a two in here, three times two is six minus six, that would give me my zero. All right, so our break even point here is x is equal to two, so we have x is greater than or equal to two. And the other part would be when we have x is less than two. All right, so again, with the absolute value, for the positive part, nothing changes. It's going to be 3x minus 6, this expression, because any value of x that's greater than or equal to 2, this thing is either neutral or it is positive. But that is not true for values of x is less than 2. All right, so again, how would you flip an expression from, posi or from negative to positive? You can multiply by negative 1. So I can take that negative 1, and I'm going to multiply it by 3x minus 6, because that entire part is inside the absolute value. All right, a little rainbow rule here. So I have negative 1 times 3x, that's uh, negative 3x. And then negative 1 uh, times negative 6, negative times a negative, gives me a positive. There we go. All right. All right, so now graphing this thing. Uh, the important value again is x equals two. So let's do this first part here. Uh, I plug in a two. Well, three times two is six, minus six is zero. So at x equals two here, we got zero. There we go. Now this graph, uh, well, I got a point here. I don't even need the y-intercept. The slope is three, which I can write as a fraction is three over one. So from this point, I'm gonna go up three, right one. Up three, right one. There we go. And it goes up. And I just plot a few points and I can sketch it. Now we get to this part. Uh, what happens at two? Well, I plug in a two here. Negative three times two is negative six. Uh, plus six is zero. So there's my open circle. Because again, it's not, we don't have the equal sign here. All right, and now what's the slope? Because I'm going to use the slope to plot uh, plot the rest of my points because, again, the slope is the pattern of the line. That's how I always teach it in grade 9 math. Slope is the pattern. So if my slope is negative 3 over 1, that's saying going uh, down 3, right 1. Well, we're going the wrong direction here. Absolute value, we want to move left. And so, again, I'm going to rewrite this fraction as 3 over negative 1. And so my slope is telling me to go up 3, left 1. So uh, 1, two, three, left one, one, two, three, left one, up three, one, two, three, left one. I could just keep doing that, but there we go. And there we go. And so that is how we graph our um, absolute value functions. So again, we're just using linear equations here, but I had to draw, uh, I had to convert this into a piecewise function where I have 
the positive part and the negative part of the absolute value. And so I end up graphing two sides of the equation because there's two pieces. All right, so let's see. 